Good morning, and God bless. Let us come before God's word in prayer. O Holy Lord, awaken us unto the need of this day, of this hour. As we stand be between those monumental moments of your triumphant entry and the cross. Lord, while we know what lies beyond the cross, sin keeps us from celebrating it as we ought to. And Lord, we ask that the veil be lifted from our eyes, the faith be reassured and restored, that what we believe in Christ, Lord, honors you and speaks your truth and offers grace and gospel to all who are seeking. Lord, we pray this day for the gatherings of your church, the devotions, the special prayers, all those recognitions of, of faith that are going on throughout the world, the way that the church is gathering in some beautiful ways, the way the church is gathering in some virtual ways, the way the church is gathering in your spirit, that we may understand our fellowship as a far greater thing than we ever had, that we will feel and be uplifted by the bonds of fellowship all around the world. This great family we've been given. Lord, help us to appreciate the wonder, the beauty, the majesty of what Christ has done. As he was tried, found wanting by us, convicted in the sin that is ours. Put upon a cross, one that belongs to each one of us, that should be given to us for our condemnation, but Lord, in your grace, is given to us for our salvation. Lord, we pray in thanks for what Christ has done and what we've been given a chance to do for others. And all this in Christ we pray. Amen. In God's word, we turn to the Gospel of John today, to John chapter 18, reading at verse 28. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. So they could be pure. So they could be free from the sin. There are allowances in the Passover laws that because of the defilement of a, of a body or other things, um, you can delay the eating of the Passover. It's all right. But these priests wouldn't delay either Christ's persecution and judgment. They wouldn't delay it, even though it only meant the delay of the feast for them for a day. They just want it to seem perfect. Isn't that a warning to all of us? We're not perfect. I'm not perfect. No one in your church is perfect. Not even, I know who you're thinking of. Well, I don't know who it is, but I'm sure if someone came to mind, oh no, they're really good. No. And anyone who tries to seem perfect is not just fooling themselves. But they're not fooling God. You see, these priests that weren't willing to go into the judgment hall, they weren't willing to face the judgment. That was theirs. And that's what happens when we avoid the, the reality of what we're doing and what we're not doing. Well, if we, a lot of people don't 
go to worship, don't come to church, don't have fellowship with the church because they don't want to be confronted with what's there. They don't want to hear that sermon, this sermon. And that's the truth of it. But that moment of impurity, oh, and it sure feels awful when you get caught in sin. That moment of defilement is a recognition of where we're really at. And whether we face it or not, when we come to those holy moments in life and we've got that on us, just as the Apostle Paul said about celebrating the Lord's Supper, you, if, you, if you take the supper in an impure way, it becomes a burden to you. It weighs on you. It's as a curse to you. And none of us want that. When it comes to the recognition of the cross, when it comes to the recognition of what sins put him there, there's no time to waste in, in, in well, I'll wait for a better day. I'll wait for that right time. You are missing out on a life of freedom from that sin. You are missing on a life of joy. You are missing on the opportunities to have the things you do in your life rather than always seeming to be trying to make amends, to have those things really be about celebrating God and about celebrating the life He's given you. Why would you wait for that? It's a sad thing that those who are in a righteous place, who are in a righteous role, couldn't face their unrighteousness, couldn't face the possibility of defilement, to see their plan through and to really realize what they were doing. Not that the, the outcome would have changed for us all. Christ's cross was what God's will was. But it might have changed something for them. God bless and keep you. Amen.